And as this weekend, we have taken time out to have an extra focus on the proclamation of the gospel uh, in Jerusalem first, and then ultimately to the uttermost parts of the world, uh, we recognize the men and women who have served uh, from amongst us and are now in glory, those who are currently serving now, and by faith believing those who will one day come to know the joy of service. But Lord, help us to realize, even as we look tonight at your word, uh, that we are all engaged in the Great Commission and that the command has come unto us. So we pray tonight, Lord, you'll bless our time around uh, these thoughts and use us for your glory in Christ's name. Amen. How many mission conferences and how many Sunday sermons and how many camp challenges and how many devotional books and Bible studies have been written about the Great Commission? Probably more than any other particular verse within the scripture. Only in eternity we'll know. Mark 16, 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So let me ask you tonight, have we listened? Have we obeyed? Has it been sufficiently done? It's an interesting thought because the world in which we live has more opportunity, I think, and more advantage than any other to uh, use this particular uh, verse. We're going to dissect this passage from uh, Mark 16, 15, and it begins with the word go. Is this authority enough? We think of the words from our Lord himself in Matthew and his great commission, 28, 18. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus himself saying, all authority is given unto me. He's saying all authority because the universe is put under him as mediator that he might redeem his people that he might gather a church that he might defend his chosen that he might subdue all enemies and bring them through as conquerors and more than conquerors you know we talk about people with authority these passages and the scripture itself really shows that Jesus has such authority and he is commanding he is commanding to go very unique passage in Luke 7 verse 6 beginning at verse 6 we read then Jesus went with them and when he was now not far from the house the centurion sent friends to him saying unto him Lord trouble not thyself for I'm not worthy that thou shouldest enter unto my roof wherefore neither thought himself to be worthy to come unto thee but said say in a word and my servant shall be healed. Verse 8, For I also am a man set under authority, and having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, Go, and he goeth. And I say unto another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. The centurion recognized who Jesus really was. And he says, I understand this principle of authority. I command to those troops under me, and so indeed you have that. The Son of God, as creator, had the original right to all things, to control them and to dispose of them. His convincing proof of his resurrection was more than ample evidence to his position to say go. We just went through Easter. The empty tomb, proof that he had such authority that he is the one to command us, and he says go. And because of who he is, let no one dare offer any excuse or any reason or any pretext why they cannot be obedient to this one word command. I've heard many testimonies and read of many testimonies of missionaries. And he said, the reason that I go is that God has called me. He's called my wife and I. He's called our family. And we have to be obedient to that call. And the only reason we go is because of that call. There's no financial gain, there's no positional gain, there's, there's no reputation to be gained, but it was an obedience to God's call. Go, Jesus says, because he has the authority and can send whomever he will to wherever he pleases. The second word 
is ye. Messengers enough. Messengers enough. From the original twelve to those who were gathered in Jerusalem after Pentecost and to those who were scattered for the persecution that followed. Well estimated numbers of believers from around AD to 100, AD 100 grew to about 1 million. In those first 100 years, less than 100 years, the population of believers grew tremendously. According to the 2011 Pew Forum study on global Christianity, the estimated number of evangelical Christians worldwide is about 3 million. World Christian Encyclopedia says that there are some 33,000 33, Protestant denominations worldwide. U.S. ministries sent out over 144,000 short-term missionaries just from the United States every year. And there are 140,000 recorded Protestant missionaries serving in the world with 64,000 of them coming right from our own country. At the end of the first century, there were 360 people for every believer. One for every 360. Now, there is 7.3 people for every believer. See how many more believers there are. The opportunities are tremendous. Seeing this graph, is, po is it possible to evangelize the world in one generation? Is it possible to reach the world? He says, go ye. And there is that church standing there. What's the next section? Into all the world. In the commission given in Acts chapter 1, the direction from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the world, it was impossible, I think, for that first century believer to conceive of anything beyond the Roman Empire. The world in which they lived, the lack of ability to understand, unless you were a seaman, unless you had actually had done some travel, uh, those things just weren't there. But today, 7.3 million billion people with an estimated 6,510 languages in the world. And those are spoken by the 11,746 people groups in 196 countries. Is there world enough? Tremendous amounts, tremendous, and we see it. And it's actually, it seems to be, it's getting smaller. Go, Jesus says, ye, the, the, the believers, and into all of the world, and it is world enough but indeed, there is tremendous opportunity. And preach. That's definite enough, isn't it? Preach, proclaim, to make known, to offer. To do this, every man is to offer pardon and eternal life to him on the terms of the plan of God's mercy through repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever there is a sinful man, there is the need to proclaim to every sinner. He offers life to every child of Adam is offered salvation. The same great commission in Matthew reads to teach or to disciple. In Luke, it says at the preaching. In John, it reads, then said Jesus unto them, peace be unto you as the father hath sent me, even so send I you. Lastly, in Acts, commanded to witness. It's the same principle that's laid out there before us. National Religious Broadcasters estimates there are approximately 2,400 Christian radio stations around 100, 100 full power Christian TV stations. And that's just in the United States. Two of the largest gospel radio broadcasters, the Far Eastern Broadcasting Company and Gospel for Asia, both yearly receive one million listener responses. The gospel going forth, preaching the gospel. Over a hundred million Bibles are sold or given away for free every year around the world. To say nothing of the millions of Christian publications of various sizes 
that circulate through the postal system and even through the internet. You think of what the Trinitarian Bible Society is doing through the Rickers and, and others all around the world. The gospel continuing to go forth to preach. This is indeed definite enough. the gospel equipment enough well soldiers and marines in Iraq and Afghanistan routinely carried 60 to 100 pounds within their backpacks of equipment of body armor of weapons of batteries the car mechanics toolbox is filled with everything overflowing from every type of wrench and screwdriver to all types of electronic tools that in order for him to accomplish his task on any vehicle he has to have them. For the soldier and the mechanic or any other occupation, not bringing along one of those items can be problematic, puts everything on hold. But for the believer, his equipment is only one, the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ, the tidings of salvation, the assurance that the Messiah has come, that sin may be forgiven, that a soul can be saved. It's a simple box, simple tools. It is indeed equipment enough. Finally, to every creature, specialized enough. To the whole creation, that is, to every human being, we have no right to limit the offer to any class of man. God commands his servants to offer salvation to all. And if they reject it, it's to their own peril. God's not to blame if they choose not to be saved. His mercy is manifest. His grace is boundless in offering life to a creature on, as guilty as mankind. Specialized enough. So the command is there. Jesus has the authority to give such a command. And it is given to ye, to us, to the church. Uh, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel, and there is our situation. But the paradox that we find. Matthew 9.37 says, Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Was that only during Jesus' time? The reality of that verse? Hardly. The reality, the paradox is there. And let's look at that in the matter of how this hands out. Go! There is authority enough, but most people don't recognize his authority. When I was in the military, there was uh, ample opportunity during those six weeks of boot camp for many young men to say, I am not going to be under the authority of somebody. They're not going to tell me what to do. And they had to learn such relationships following orders that were commanded because lives depended upon it. From our earliest days of raising children, we recognize that the giving of responsibility or the obedience to commands from parent to child, from teacher to student, from employer to employee, from police to uh, whatever, whatever the, the situation is, it's necessary. And yet mankind finds it very difficult to follow the principles of authority. People blindly go through life, even Christians, ignoring the commands of Christ. Or their life is centered on me. I don't need to listen to what he says because my life and my responsibilities are more important than what Jesus has said. Still others absolutely refuse the call, which ultimately is seen as rebellion against our king and commander. So as clear as the word is, go from the authority of Jesus himself, there are so many who absolutely refuse that for one reason or another. Go ye. We talk about messengers enough. What does the chart tell us? Let's start, oops, I'm sorry. Christian population in blue, world population in the dark green. What's happening? Growth of the world and, and, is, and is powerful. And we talked about the early days of the relationship of the church to believers.
but as the decades go on, the world population continues to grow, but the population of Christians is not as fast. So go ye, are there messengers enough? There's becoming fewer and fewer. And if you take into consideration, a lot of these statistics don't necessarily point to true evangelical Christians, but those who are in the general ballpark called Christians and have no real heart's desire to follow such. Survey done among 2,400 Christians, 80% of them agree to the fact that I have a personal responsibility to share my religious beliefs about Jesus Christ with non-Christians. Eight out of ten sitting around the table says, I have a personal responsibility as a believer to do that. But 8% are hesitant to let others know that they're Christians. 75% feel comfortable sharing their belief of Christ with someone else. 61% have not shared it because uh, shared how to become a Christian with anyone in the past six months. 48% have not invited anybody to the church in the past six months. And 20% rarely, if never, pray for people who are not professing Christians. So in, in, in the test, it says, oh, yes, you know, 8 out of 10 believe we have a responsibility to do it. But the actual engagement of believers in doing that, go ye, the number gets smaller and smaller. So as the number of Christians decreases as the decades go on and the added, this type of attitude prevails, Jesus' command falls upon fewer and fewer deaf ears or hearts are fewer and fewer as the matter of responding to such a call by the Lord himself. Go ye into all the world. Area enough population. But we look at the population projections by 2030, 8.5 billion. By 2050, 9.7 billion. By 2100, 11.2 billion. And you take that other graph and you project that and you see fewer and fewer believers as the world grows. But note on the bottom, 70,000 70, plus people die every day in the unreached world without Jesus Christ. 70,000 people die daily without ever hearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Looks pretty positive, doesn't it? Todd Johnson in the Atlas to Global Christianity states that 86% of non-Christians of the world are not relationally connected to even one Christian. They are unreached. People within the entire unreached people's groups have no opportunity to hear the gospel face to face unless a missionary comes to them and a church is planted and are able to reach them. The unreached number is over 2.9 billion. Each blue dot, each red dot represents around 50,000 people that are listed there. Now, don't let the purple dots fool you, because each purple dot represents just 10 missionaries, while each red dot equals 50,000 non-Christians. There are plenty of Christians to reach the world, but few who strategically go. While very few even move cross-culturally, the vast majority of missionaries work among reached nations with a strong Christian presence is small. As you can see, this leaves only 3.3% of all missionaries who work among 2.9 billion unreached peoples. Tremendous numbers. The gospel. We talked about the, uh, the preaching of the gospel being definite enough. Every year, 180 million Bibles and New Testaments are wasted, lost, or destroyed due to incompetence, hostility, bad planning, or inadequate manufacturing. The average Western missionary spends only 3% of his time involved in direct evangelism. 
less than one third of Western missionaries are involved in evangelism and church planting. Ninety-one percent of all Christian outreach evangelism does not target non-Christians, but targets other Christians in the broadest sense as far as countries are concerned. What does it teach us about the equipment, the gospel? It's a simple plan, it's simple tools, and yet what works, what is supposed to be done, is really not being done. to every creature. North Americans who don't know Christians. These are people who live in North America. 2.2% agnostics. Don't even know a Christian. Atheists, 4.5. Baha'i, 9.8. Buddhist, 65.8% of Buddhists don't even know a Christian in North America. Chinese folk, 74.9, and all the way down the line. Sikhs, 81%. All total, uh, all non-Christians, 19.8%, don't even know a Christian. Go into all the world, and yet, as we have here, to every creature the gospel being preached, and yet how many are within our grasp that don't even know a Christian? We look at the the 1040 window, we say, well, this region in Asia and across North or Africa and so forth, uh, it's, it's tremendously large, great opportunities. And yet with the North America, how many don't even know, know a Christian? And so it comes to the solution. Jesus says, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. There's clear planning, clear uh, direction as to what the Great Commission has given us. Uh, there are indeed, there is indeed authority enough, there are messengers enough, there is area enough, there is the task is clear enough, the equipment is more than enough, and there is specialization enough. And yet where does it lack? It just lacks in those who are willing to do the work, willing to say, yes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, I need the responsibility to tell others about Christ. We have to stop passing it off on somebody else, but to realize that, that this, is, this is our task, this is our responsibility. Go ye, that's us, into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Father, thank you for our evening, this pause in the day. Lord, we're burdened and hurt, and saddened by those around us who have yet to know, to even hear, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to know of Christianity and what we believe, that even in our own land, even within North, the North American continent, how few don't even know what a believer believes. Lord, may our testimony by how we act and how we do business and by the very uh, demeanor of, of our household, of our, our uh, interaction with them, help them to realize uh, what believers are and what we've been offered. You've commanded us. We have great opportunity. Uh, bless these seeds to our hearts in Christ's name.